how often do you build things uh, and prototype things in, in real life uh, and do physical prototyping? Um, as often as, as possible. And, and I think that's a really great question because as designers, we, you know, as industrial designers, we are designing things for the real world, the physical items that we are designing for the real world. And there is no substitute for getting your hands on something and seeing you know, how, it, how it interacts with you know, how heavy is it, how light is it, how big is it, um, what's the texture like. Uh, that's really, really important to, to get right. Uh, and you know, as part of our job, we need to care about those things. So um, I think I personally like to make prototypes as much as possible. Normally, I start out with really rough prototypes, you know, whether it's just made out of cardboard or, uh, you know, things found around the home that are a similar size and shape that really helps as well. Um, you know, uh, I was working on a project recently and I realized that, um, you know, it's difficult while I'm at home here to, to make prototypes and to make, you know, things that we can tell what size they are. And I realized that a mop bucket that I had was a similar size and shape to the design that, that we were working on. Not exactly the same, but enough for me to look at it and at least understand in 3D space where things will go. And, you know, pick it up, hold it. Okay, button can go here, flip it upside down, you know, ports, whatever can go on the bottom. And you can, you can start to understand like what makes sense for this size and, and shape. Um, so it doesn't have to be a, um, you know, we have different levels of prototyping in industrial design. Like whether it's just a vague household object that vaguely looks like or, or is the same sort of size to a, a paper model uh, that, that you've crafted to be more accurate. And then, and then we move into, we call, we call one type of um, prototype a looks like, and then the other type a works like. Now a looks like model is, uh, it looks like what it will look like in the end. So all of the paint finishes are correct. The materials, you know, you try and get them as close as possible. It becomes like a, a film prop of, um, of, of what the object might look like. And you can even do things like adding in um, weights and, you know, uh, sand or, um, uh, uh, steel ball bearings to make it feel like it's the same weight as well. Uh, that's really, really quite useful. So that all falls under a looks like model. Um, then what we have is called a uh, works like model. And that is essentially all of the electronics, all of the mechanisms, all of the components, um, prototypes together, but overall, it doesn't look anything like the final thing like it might be just a bunch of electronics in a in a perspex clear box and you you push the button here and then something happens over there and you know it it just works the way that the final thing will work and you can you can do that uh even with, with stuff like breadboards uh you know you don't have to solder anything together you just get a in electronics it's a it's called a breadboard where you just plug in different wires and then you can plug in other components without needing sold or anything. Uh, they look ugly. They're never gonna be used in a real product, but being able to get a works like model is, is really gonna help as well. So I think to answer the question, how often do you build a physical prototype? Uh, the, the answer is uh, as often as you can, um, as often as you can to understand different things at different times of the design process. Um, you know, you're not going to try and do a looks like model really early on in the design process because they're very expensive to do. If you're trying to use all the correct materials, all of the correct weights, you know, you have to try and machine different parts, injection mold some parts with, with you know, um, one off moldings that cost a lot of money because you're not getting a lot of volume out of it, uh, just the one. So you're never gonna do a looks like model really early on. Early on, you're gonna be having the, the mop bucket that looks vaguely the same size, moving on to a paper model, moving on to maybe then a 3D printed version. Uh, and you know, as you move along the process, 
with every new step, with every new stage, uh, you're going to be uh, getting a new um, prototype made to uh, solidify what you thought it might, you know, any changes that you made from the, from the phase before until now, you need to retest that. You need to re-prototype it to see that you're still going on the right track. Um, and obviously, as you get more and more further down and, and, and uh, the fidelity gets higher and higher, the cost gets higher and higher as well. Um, so at that point, you make maybe fewer models as you go. Uh, and then it might be a couple of months in between two looks like models, or maybe like six months in between two looks like models, uh, because you kind of have that buildup of knowledge as you go along and the cost by that point, like if you're making uh, like a chair, if you're making a, a TV stand or something, I, I don't know, I'm just looking around the room, but if you're making something that will eventually be mass produced and you're starting to get to the point where it's using the correct materials, the correct manufacturing processes, then they're gonna be very expensive to build one-offs. Um, so it gets fewer and fewer as time goes on, but then it starts to fade more into manufacturing prep and uh, using the correct tools even. So if we say that um, a works like is just how it works, but doesn't look anything like it, a looks like is looks exactly like it, but it might have been made in a, in a, in a model workshop, a model maker's workshop, like a film prop, and then the next stage after that is, okay, how are these actually being tools? How are these actually running down the, the manufacturing factory line? Uh, and you know, that, that's gonna fade into just finally becoming the, the product. So yeah, thank you very much for your question on how often do you make physical prototypes? And the answer is as, as many as I can, <laughs> as, often, as often as I can. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Keep a lookout for the other questions that I post with the answers soon. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And if you learned anything in the video, do let me know down in the comments below because I really enjoy hearing about it. And as always, I will see you all on the next video. Bye.